I got him. Kyle Shanahan is four and two in the playoffs as a head coach in the National Football League. If you lose to Seattle and you fall to four and three, I think that it. And again, this is not me saying fire Kyle right now. Kyle's a made man. He's a great coach, and I love that laminated play sheet. If you lose to Seattle, I don't care what the weather is. As a double digit or darn near favorite in this spot, that is a really, really bad mark on his resume. Okay, so that's let, all let, I'm saying. You're extending the conversation we're having the changeover, and let's let's yeah. do that. I because you okay. pitted Bonte and I against you and Joe, and it felt uncomfortable. Well, actually, as much I was, as I love Bonte, I, I think that we were pitted against you guys, actually. But but it doesn't matter. The point is the point is this. If you want to say, like to me, it's kind of a, it, 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 I mean, it's a simple thing to say. Losing bad, if winning the good. Niners lose. That's not good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're right. You're right. The problem is for me is when the word resume got used, I was triggered because I don't want to hear anymore about Kyle's resume because it makes it feel like you're heading down the road, not to fire him, but you're heading down the road of calling him a choke job. You're heading down the road of this ridiculous Big narrative choke that's been built through the years about Kyle Shanahan that he A, can't win the big game, or B, loses big leads in the fourth. We hang the dang Super Bowl around his neck, and he wasn't even the coach. He was the offensive coordinator for a team who watched another team score 30 points in a quarter and a half and were mad at the O.C., like, that's weird. So the bottom line for me is this. I'll go with you and say, sure, if you lose a game as a 10-point 10, 10 favorite, that's bad. However, I'm just currently not available for the party that wants to get food and drinks and discuss Kyle's resume and that he's overrated, and he's his genius, and he can't win the big one. It's not even about firing him. It's about these labels that people want to use when they get frustrated. The Niners were to lose tomorrow. That would be frustrating. Yeah, But yeah, the, there yeah. is nothing to discuss about the head coach of the 49ers. There's nothing to see here. They've got one of the best, and that will be true no matter what happens tomorrow. No matter what, yes, he's but one of the best coaches lose, in the game. If they lose, and already, Mark, there are, are only seven coaches in the history of the league who have won more playoff games without winning a Super Bowl. So he becomes... Oh, the can't win the big one guy. Well, and if, honestly, if they lose this game, even if they win a couple of playoff games and they don't win the Super Bowl, he climbs that list. And these are not... These are not things that I'm using to disparage him. He's a great coach. He's a top five coach in the league. He's an offensive genius. He's got a long-term deal, and he's not going anywhere. And thank God he's not going anywhere. For the first time since Jim Harbaugh, they have a real one at the helm of the San Francisco 49ers. Yep. I'm not saying that any of that is untrue. All I am saying is that until he wins a Super Bowl, he becomes Marv Levy. He becomes... Dan Reeves, John Fox, Chuck Knox. These are all coaches with more playoff wins without the big one. Great coaches. Yeah. All of them. All of them. By the way, like Uncle Looney, one of our faithful uh, faithful here on YouTube, what's wrong with being critical when it's warranted? Here's my response. It's not warranted. We'll see. Is that we'll clear? See. Okay. No, you, your you, opinion. You're, right. My opinion. It's not warranted. And it's never been warranted. You can come in the next day and be mad at a play call, but my problem with the Kyle Shanahan discussion is it's always been from 10,000 feet, and it should be on the ground level, okay? If you're bothered, this is inherent about being a fan. If you're bothered by a play call, you're bothered by a game, you're bothered, how about an example? You're bothered right before halftime of the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. You're bothered that Kyle wasn't more aggressive with okay. Jimmy Garoppolo. Now that's a discussion. But too often for me, where the irrational fan takes this is to a place about job status or labels as a choker or somebody who's called a genius, but he's actually not. This is all ridiculous. And, and so that's all I want to say. I do not have any interest in the conversation going there because we're sitting here 
literally having a, a discussion about something that hasn't even happened yet right. in the midst of a 10-game win streak. It, like, it's a nice I, I, little run. My response to what's wrong with criticism uh, when it's warranted is how come all of you aren't there to praise when it's warranted? Because that's reality. The conversation we're having about a loss tomorrow isn't even real yet. They might right. win by 30. They should win okay. by at least 10. So, I mean, we're sitting here right now like – and just, people have been praising just, him. I mean, talking about coach of the year, Mike Silver wrote the article, and many people have said Kyle Shanahan should be or will be. He'll finish in the top three in coach of the year voting. I think that he should be coach of the year. They've won 10 in a row. He's on his third quarterback. They are crushing every single opponent <laughs> over this run with job. Brock Purdy. He's done an amazing job. All I'm saying, Mark, is if you think about the what if tomorrow – if you happen to come up on the losing end tomorrow in that spot, heavily favored, not good at home, it's beyond not good. No, no, it's just flat out not good. Like people lose football games as favorites. They, they like it happens every year. Like right now, I'll tell you a bet. I'd love to do with you. I'd love to do a bet. Okay, bet everybody who's got minus points in front of them this week will not win. There's going to be an upset. Of course. I mean, that's. What do you mean, of course? Why, of course? Because we talked about it yesterday. Underdogs against the spread, 65% since 2017. Win outright. No, I get that. Win outright. But you look, okay, let's talk about the the double digit or near double digit favorites. Is either one of them going to lose? Uh, well, there's three of them. If you you add in, and I guess, I don't know, what is the. What's the Bengals spread right now? It's not double digits, but it's, uh, or is it? It's close. Buffalo is 13. I've got a 9, a 13, a hook, and a 9. Okay. So it is almost up to double digits. Of those three games, are any of those three teams going to lose? Now that's a bet I'd take. Maybe I wouldn't bet that. Yeah, of course. Probably not, but it wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't shock me at all. The other games are one and a half, three, and two and a half. Yeah, those are, those are tight games. And I would tell you that two of those underdogs are probably going to win. Who do you think that'll be? I think it'll you be... You think the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to win? Yes, I do. And, uh, and you think Tampa's going to beat Dallas? If I had to pick a second, I would take uh, Tampa over Dallas. I'm not a believer in uh, the Giants yeah. over Minnesota. Me neither. Me neither. Yeah. I yeah. mean, as, as much Look, as I would love to, but I just don't... I think Minnesota is so explosive that yeah. I think that they're going to win that game. They would cover that game, but Dallas given two and a half at Tampa. If you're telling me I get the GOAT at home and points... And points. I mean that's that's yeah. a bet I'd have to take. Yeah, I I, I get it. I, I I guess I just like this is this is the way uh, my my brain works. Like I it 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 bothers me in life when people have good stuff and they're not thankful for it. It bothers me. So I, I'm I don't, very thankful. Yeah. So I don't. Well, I'm not even necessarily just talking to you. You know what I'm talking about? Gosh, half of our YouTube chat right now is like it is warranted. No, it's not. No, it's. Not okay. You want to gather Steve Kerr and Steph Curry into this conversation as well and be like, remember that time you missed a shot? Like, what on earth are all of you really, really actually saying and talking about? You got one of the best coaches in the game. You got two other teams in these playoffs that are on their third quarterback. And what's the deal with all of them? They're the double digit underdogs. Right. Kyle's on his third quarterback and he's the. Double digit favorite. Well, this third like, string quarterback's on. won five in a row and six in a row if you give him credit yes. for when he came off the bench. So right. this is not Skyler Thompson and this is not Anthony Brown. But Kyle doesn't get credit, some credit for that. Oh, can we give Kyle some effing credit? Okay. Thank Bro- you, Draymond. So Brock or Flock. No, he gets credit. Absolutely. Okay. And I think to me, it still is Flock. Brock has been great. But the flock was good before Brock came on, and I believe they won five in a row before Brock became the starter, and they've run five in a row since he became the starter. Yep. So for me, it's more flock than Brock. Okay, I knew that was going to lead to one of yeah. those for sure. Yeah, All right, tick. so so a little Friday tick. Here, here, here would be my number one response, and and like the true You're more answer. More Brock than flock. Well, more Brock than flock. Yes. However, I'm plenty of flock. So uh, right. <laughs> Flock of seagulls here <laughs> because the the true answer, as is the case with so many debates, is going to lie somewhere in the middle. I think you'd be a crazy person to say that Brock Purdy could just, you know, like kind of Tom Brady did. Brady is such an exception where he does what he does for 20 years with the Patriots and everyone is doing their version of Brock or Flock in New England. And it was, is it Brady or Bill? 
And and Brady just gives such an affirmative answer on that by bailing out, going to Tampa Bay, which was not even considered a contender, and winning a damn Super Bowl and not even doing it out of the one seed. Like, won a game at Lambeau Field and then beat Patrick Mahomes. Like, that was as affirmative of an answer. It was Brady, not Bill. Okay? But there's that doesn't mean Bill's a bad coach. Same thing here. I'm not going to tell you that Brock Purdy could go to the Chicago Bears next year and they'd win the Super Bowl. That's ridiculous. However, I'll also say this. To simply say, oh, this 49er roster is so stacked and Kyle is such a strong coach and play caller that Brock Purdy is just a guy who, who landed in a great spot and therefore there are tons of quarterbacks who could come in and have the 49ers at 13 and 4. I'm I'm so going to push back on that. And the most simplistic of stats is the answer. So you mentioned the Jimmy time. I'm going to give both of them the game they entered into the first quarter. doesn't go on their record. But I'm going to give Jimmy the Seattle game that he won 27-7. to And I'm going to give Brock the Miami game that was won 33-17 to or whatever it was. Okay? So if I give those guys that game, here's the flat-out fact. The 49ers with Jimmy Garoppolo as the quarterback averaged 23 points a game. With Brock, they averaged 33. So if you think it's all flock, I want you to call right now and explain to me what happened there. Why are they averaging 10 points more per game with fewer pick sixes, by the way, because Jimmy got a bunch of those. Why are they his averaging? Way. What, yes, in his favor. Why are they averaging 10 points more per game since Brock Purdy came in? Well, you could look at uh, the health of the team and the improvement of the offensive line and the relative strength of schedule in terms of the opponents. Those would be three factors that would lead me toward the flock. First three games for Brock Purdy playoff teams. First three games. Playoff teams? Dolphins, Bucks, Seahawks. Playoffs, playoffs, playoffs. Dolphins with a clearly failing Tua Tunga Vailoa. Eight and three in that moment. Eight and three hadn't lost a start yet. Right. But... In a spot where that team had been exposed. I mean, honestly, like that's, we're going to spotlight that. I mean, who did Jimmy beat? Like he built his points per game up on the Cardinals and the Panthers. So, like, you got Tampa as a playoff team. They are. Yes, but aren't, they're not. They are. I feel but like they're playing Monday it's night. It's a pretty weak team. <laughs> It's a weak Tampa Bay. I mean, again, in the, what and is and a team that was incredibly beleaguered. Again, a team that was really badly injured in their offensive line, and Tom Brady was wildly ineffective. Right, but we could do that to any opponent. Like, I, there's a, put it this way: Brock's opponents versus Jimmy opponents. The, the Brock's are probably more impressive, probably more impressive than Jimmy's. I would say. But, like, the whole strength of schedule thing, I think, mean, Kyle, Kyle, I know this triggers the hell out of you. Like, hmm. there aren't that many good teams in the NFL for us to say, whoa, impressive victory. Nobody beat the Chiefs. Nobody beat the Bills on the 49ers this year. I get that. Nobody beat the Eagles yet. So, who is it you want them to go play? The guy has played six games. He's won them all, and they've averaged 33 and a half points a game. I would, I would say this in the flock argument. I, I think I land on your side here, Mark, but... Uh, to Dibbs's point, the Niners have started turning the ball over defensively a lot, which helps out on offense. You talk about the 33 points against the Dolphins. Good point. They got seven of those on a defensive touchdown against the Seahawks. They score 21. They get a late first half turnover that Traverius Ward takes inside the five. They've been in the plus in the turnover margin in every single one of those games. That's totally fair, and I think it's a strong point. However, I would I I would then I would answer that with can you tell me about pick sixes? Can you tell me about defensive touchdowns? Because I feel like the 49ers have they had well, they, any they're the one against the I'm looking at it right now. Yep. Thank you, Kyle. One against the Dolphins. It was a uh, fumble return, Dre Greenlaw in okay. the win against Miami. They have any in any since then? So in any, I'm in looking any, at the touchdown log, and I'm seeing Samuel Purdy McCaffrey, Ayuk McCaffrey, Kittle McCaffrey, Kittle McLeod, Ray Ray. Yep. Yeah, they did. That, Ray was Ray. A, that was a Brock Purdy. Exactly. That was a Shanahan that touchdown. That was a Garoppolo. Uh, yeah. Kittle, Kittle McCaffrey, Ayuk, Kittle. God, this Kittle guy. Where yeah. did he come from? Yeah. Oh, oh. by the way. Jimmy's th- supposed to be his best friend. Exhibit C, George Kittle. What happened when Brock Purdy showed up? He turned into Kelsey again. 
He's supposed to be best friends with Jimmy Garoppolo, and, and yet Jimmy won't throw him the damn football. So, like, what happened? Coinky dink? Just that's what we're gonna go with. George Kittle became an elite player. The fantasy world gave up on George Kittle. We gave up on him. And oh, by the way, take it from someone who got knocked out of his playoffs because of <coughs> George Kittle in the Seattle game. Got knocked out because the Four guy went touchdowns crazy. Kittle. from Jimmy. <laughs> Thank you. Kittle like a niner. That's, Kittle like a niner. Thank you. That's my current favorite of the, of the guru drops <laughs> of the Kittle centric. Uh, he's got eleven touchdowns, right? Yeah. Four from Jimmy, seven from Brock. In that's and uh, in fewer games. And I'm not seeing any from uh, in, Trey. In fewer games, yeah. Trey. Trey only. How many touchdown passes did Trey even have? Uh, zero. Could, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he had five quarters. Right. He only had five quarters of action. Yeah. And and, and four of them he were in pick. that sh- Chicago rain. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. He had Tyler Croft open. He threw it over his head. I'm just looking at the uh, the touchdown log. The Niners have scored. 53 touchdowns, and uh, yeah, Trey Lance uh, had uh, zero of them. And I, yeah, by the way, I'm I'm also just like thinking about the 49er, uh, the, the the schedule uh, prior to Brock Purdy. I know that they had a pick six in that game against the Rams. You know what were the defensive touchdowns? I'm seeing prior three to Brock defensive in? touchdowns all year. I think it's less about defensive touchdowns and more about short fields. I agree with that, Kyle. Absolutely. That's fair. That's fair. But if we're going to sit here and do the points per game for each quarterback, you know, yeah, we can add in field position. You can add in a couple of defensive touchdowns. However, I would say that is such a large gap. It gets swallowed up by an obvious point that every 49er fan listening to us knows. Offenses look better when Brock got in. Yeah, it absolutely. Yeah. And that's got to be a thing. A click better, that's for sure. Thing. So there's some Brock here, not just flock. There there's is some, some flock. Brock, absolutely. But part of the flock, too, I think, is an offensive line that has gelled and played better in the second half of the year than it did in the first half of the year. And it's you know what Kyle's saying about the defense putting the offense in a great position as well. Yeah. I, I, I So, like, if I were to per- give this a percentage... Um, as a Brock flock a, breakdown. Yeah, exactly. Like the flock is a constant. It's a good roster. It has been all year. It has been for a number of years. McCaffrey arriving really, I think, sent it into the stratosphere, at least offensively. But Jimmy had uh, a handful of starts with Christian, won them all, um, and except for the Kansas City game, which wasn't a full Christian game. But as we know, once Christian became the starter, they're 10-0. and That's not an accident. That's a big, actually, point in the favor of flock. So I'm going to give the flock 40, and I'm going to give Brock 60. Just spotlighting these six games and why they're suddenly averaging over 30 points a game, flock 40, Brock 60. I'd go the other way, which I'm glad you had that breakdown, which, uh, you know, 60-40. I would go 60% flock, and part of that is, you know, the fact that McCaffrey has really become a, a major part of this offense. Eli Mitchell is back, Debo is back, and the rest of it. Yep. Flock you. How wow. about that? How about How that about from that? you, especially? <laughs> uh, McCaffrey more TD that. passes than Brock Purdy. You did? <laughs> uh, 